It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports. And today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Falcons and the Chiefs on EA Sports. From one of the loudest venues in the NFL, there's a look at Arrowhead Stadium here in Kansas City. A few short moments ago, these two teams made their way out of the stadium tunnels, and the noise level in this place was just about off the charts. They are set for football as the Chiefs get set to do battle with the Atlanta Falcons. Brandon Gordon alongside the one and only Charles Davis and CD. Lots of compelling storylines in a game like this. Let's take a look at some of the numbers for these two offenses. And I'm glad you brought up the numbers because sometimes it's hard to quantify a team's performance solely by judging the numbers. But I think with these two teams, what you see is a pretty accurate representation of who they are. for their opening drive. And they will be led out by their 6-3 quarterback. What I enjoyed this week is that you asked to talk to his offensive center before the game and find out a little bit more about him and what the relationship is. And that was a pretty positive story, wasn't it? Yeah, and really what I took away from that is just how it has permeated throughout the entire offensive line, the relationship they've had. It's really a group that's in sync. They care about him. That's the thing. They really care. And when you care that much, you're going to play that much harder for him and give him a better chance to lead the team to wins. Green now on first and 10. And this one caught by Travis Kelsey. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets his football out shy of the 30 to the 29. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed. And on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there finding him in stride for really good yardage. And here's Green, throwing on first down. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. I don't see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Throwing again, Green. It's Kelsey on the ground. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You talk about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. Only two yards, and it'll be a punt on their opening possession. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. On fourth down on is Dustin Colquitt to kick this away. 
He'll send this one into the Midwestern air, and it's a good one. That'll be a 47-yard punt, officially five on the return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and ten. So here are the Falcons now as they get set for their opening possession. And leading them, Charles, their quarterback, their field general. And what I enjoyed in preparing for this game was talking not just with the coaching staff, but with him as well. And I found it interesting that the coaching staff sees him one way, and he sees himself in an entirely different way. Yeah, one thing he said he's always working on, he's, we know he's not bad at this, but his footwork always wants to improve that, and that's something he's going to focus on here. And what was so funny, what the offensive coordinator said right off the top, he's got great footwork. Love his footwork. So this guy is never satisfied. He finds his man complete. It's Gonzalez. And this will be a short game of three before he's brought down at the 22. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6'5", and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. From the 22, Vic over the middle complete. That's Gonzalez. That's good, the completion there for seven yards. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. These guys hooking up right away here, Charles. Two plays, both passes in his direction, and both catches. And in our time together, have we not seen the tight end position continue to develop in the passing game? You know, at some point, we may not call them tight ends anymore. We may have to come up with an entirely different way of designating that position and what they do on the field. Because when I hear tight end, I think of the old school, hand in the dirt, blocking on the line of scrimmage. These guys are much more receiver than they are guys who are going to move into pass in the running game. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. Vic's throw into the hands of Pitts here. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet is to jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Vic now. Incomplete. Jets are good. He's going to be a very busy guy. Two catches already in this opening drive, and they were looking his way for a third. I think they put this defense on notice that that could be a really, really frequent combination. Vic with the incompletion on first down, and now that leads to second and ten. To throw, Vic. He finds his man, complete. That's done. Touchdown, Falcons! A big play there! 51 yards! And the Falcons are on the board first here on the road in Kansas City. Well, he's used to running it that distance. Here he had to catch it, too, before making the run. Heck of a play for the score. There's not many things better for an offense than a back who is a complete guy who can run it and catch it. And we just saw him complete a big-time play for a touchdown. Point after, right down the middle. And that makes the score 7-0. A drive that time of six plays. And the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. It is fielded right at the goal line. 
And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20. Kansas City taking the field for their second drive and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. The last run got six, now second and four. Back to throw. Green. The tight end, Kelsey, has it over the middle. Travis Kelsey, and he is finally out of bounds, but not before taking it down inside the 30. A big play there on the catch and run. And when we talk about yards after the catch, you think about speedy little receivers, but Travis Kelsey was third in the NFL in 2020 in that category. Yeah, and this is what we mean when we talk about flipping the field, having your offense look at going a long way to a short way after he makes a play. His ability to do that, evident. Able to make the catch there, keep his momentum going, and just continue downfield. Now Green on first down. And Hill with it over the middle. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Hills hit, and he lost the football. And the Falcons grab it. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. There are two words that we hear coaches say all of the time. One starts with a B, one starts with an S. Ball security. And they preach it. They, they have it up in, in, in meeting rooms, right? You see the signs. They talk about it all the time. But still, when you've got defenders out there who are preaching, hey, we're going to take the ball away from you, no matter what position you play, you've got to take care of the rock. on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. To throw on second and six. Vic. He completes it to Julio Jones. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Well, it's almost as if they didn't leave the field after their first drive. They picked right up where they left off. Another good throw there. And this offense humming here in the early going. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll try to left side. It's done. Win to run past midfield. And all the way down to the 41-yard line. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defense is saying, okay, we got you hemmed in. If you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. So now first and 10 in Chiefs territory at the 41. Now a handoff here to his running back. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. From 
from the 36. Vic, throw caught there by Crumpler. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now, Falcon football, as they've got it with a third down coming up. first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Good Brandon from our time in college football where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree. One thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. zone now. Vic, he finds his man complete. It's Gonzalez. That catch good for only a couple. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. It'll be Vic once more. He finds his man complete. That's done. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. It looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? They'll try and run for it on first and goal. A good run of six yards there. Gets him closer to the goal line with second down coming up. And Brandon, they went to the nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. They'll run for it with Anderson. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. And now third and goal coming up, the loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder, and they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. So it's third and goal now. This is where the KC crowd can make it very tough. He'll try again. What a stand so far defensively. And now that's going to bring up a fourth and goal. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Does it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three points here, a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. Can this defense hold them out? Here we go now, fourth and goal from the two. Here's Vic. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They're turned away on fourth and goal. And the ball's going to be going back to the Chiefs. Everyone gears up for third down, talks about the importance of it. But fourth down, that's truly the moment of truth play, isn't it? Everything's dialed up a little bit more. And it, you know, it's such a momentum play, isn't it? Absolutely, because it can flip either way depending on who converts on fourth down. Yeah. 
Richardson. And he was very fortunate there to get out of his end zone. He maybe got back to the two-yard line. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. Because I remember playing in these spots, and my coaches always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. On second down now, it's Holmes. And he's able to get him a small cushion before being taken down at the five, a gain of three. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. They'll run with Holmes. And he'll get inside the 10, but he's short of the line he needed. Call it a gain of four, and it'll bring up fourth down. Here's Dustin Colquitt now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Forty-seven yards on the punt that time, just one yard on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a, a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, that, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, if they stopped us once, that's all right. Let's keep moving it, make them do it again. Officially, it's a one yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Throwing, Vic. He finds his man complete. That's done. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Looking for White on the deep ball. A fight for it, and this is caught. What a catch. It's a big play there for Atlanta. Defender was right there in his shorts. Is that one of those situations as a DB where you just tip your cap and say, nice catch? Well, you're supposed to. But a true competitor, he's not tipping his cap at all. He's upset he still didn't make the play. If it's a 50-50 ball or a moment of truth, he's got to win more than his fair share of them as well. Probably especially angry because if it was incomplete, would have been fourth down. Exactly. Vic to throw it. Shakes off the sack. But he can't get away forever, and down he goes. A big loss there of about seven yards on first and goal, so now it's second down. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as he'll stop him with just over a minute to go before halftime. Go ahead and take a seat.
Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Another try after the first down sack. Vic, a quick throw here. That's complete. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Now here's Vic. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? So out now comes the field goal unit for the Falcons. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And his kick is right there. It's good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. No run back here for Hall, and this will come out to the 25. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. And for him, it's been pretty limited involvement. Down on the scoreboard, maybe time to turn to this guy. And you know me well. Winning games to me means starting with the running game and continuing to press the running game. Maybe you go away from him a little bit now, but the bottom line is he hasn't touched it enough to make a difference. Well, they haven't established that running game yet. The question is, will they? On first down, Green. Yeah, he'll find Hall. The Chiefs now going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Looking to throw. Green. That one complete to Okoye. Now another timeout called for by the offense as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. First and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. Kelsey, a nice catch. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Well, that conclusion comes with a high degree of difficulty, especially on the catch. Had to look that one in one-handed, able to do so, and ends up picking up a first down as well. The Chiefs quickly now going to use the last of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Flag comes in. This might be a free play. Another pass into the reliable hands of Kelsey. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. And that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly.
Now they'll try to take advantage of that offsides call. Here's first and five. They'll look to throw again. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Working with second and five now. Again, he'll drop to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Hall. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 17-yard line. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. First, let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for the Falcons. And they've had plenty of success throwing the football so far this afternoon as they're on pace to throw for over 300 yards if their form holds. Meanwhile, for the Chiefs, they weren't quite as successful throwing the ball as their counterparts were, but they still were able to move the ball reasonably well in that first half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Falcons back to receive. They've got the lead, and they'll get this football as the second half gets underway. This taken in at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Falcons ready to go back to work to start the third quarter. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half, they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it. But I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities. And I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. On first down, done. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. From the 25 on second down, Vic, throw left side complete. That's Gonzalez. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll step aside and get an update when we return to Arrowhead. Now on third down, an extra DB out there for the Chiefs. From the gun, Vic. He completes it to Jones. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's another beautiful throw right there. Gets it to his man right in stride. And I think that throw kind of exemplifies what we've seen from this offense throughout this game. They've been in rhythm. They've been sharp. They've been on it. And they pick up another first down there. No. Oh. 
They'll run on first down. It's done. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. If this defense wants to stay in this ballgame, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do. And right now with that lead, that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try to make some plays in their backfield. The throw on second down from Vic incomplete. Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion for us there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defensive coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. This complete to Jones. And he's going to come up a few yards short. Brought down at the 45. Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed-out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route-running savvy. The Falcons send out their punter. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. So here's the Chiefs offense ready for their first reps in half number two. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense him saying, OK, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. You see, a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's back. We know that he's fast in the open field. But man, his first step is so quick, too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning up field. But also, when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast, the linebackers don't have a chance to react. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Back to throw. Green. And incomplete on a deep ball. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Looking to throw. Green. Complete the tight end, Kelsey. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Operating from the gun, Green. And he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw it, and was able to make the short catch and put the down marker back to one. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. To the right side, it's Kelsey. Three yards the game there, second down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Back to throw again. A quick slant to Hill. 
sometimes a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. From the gun, he'll hand this off, and he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage and mixed traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? Line of scrimmage, the 24. This is second and six. Back to throw. Green trying to find his tight end, Kelsey, and it's intercepted. It's Desmond Trufant, and the Falcons are going to take over here up near the 40. They should have known. They should have known, baby. And right about now, you start to think, and maybe they're starting to think, gosh, maybe points aren't going to happen for us in this game. Well, it's a thought that is worth having because so far in this game, this defense has not just had the upper hand. They've appeared to be a step ahead, maybe even two steps 